Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part nine of my Samsung Mobile SDK tutorial. In this part of the tutorial, I am going to completely finish the paint application that we started way back in part seven. Thought I could do it in part eight, but it just got a little bit long. So I'm going to finish it up right now, and I'm going to jump in directly into the code so as to not waste any time. So let's get into it. So now we need to go back up inside of OnCreate and do pretty much exactly the same thing for our eraser button and add an event listener for it as well. This is just called eraser button and this is called eraser button. This is eraser and this is eraser. Of course that means we're gonna have to create eraser button click listener and guess what? It's almost identical to this pen button click listener so we're just gonna copy it. There it is. Copy and then just to make sure we know which is which eraser listener paste that in there come back up here change this to eraser gonna do pretty much the same exact thing we're gonna check if the current tool being used is the eraser tool and that is action eraser is the reference for that and then we're just gonna come in here and change all these pens to eraser so we're gonna say is the setting window shown and change this to eraser so if it's shown make it go away if it isn't shown show it on the screen change the eraser instead of pen there, change this to eraser, all this is fine, change this to eraser, this is a capital T, make, make sure I didn't do that wrong up here, yep, I did, change this to capital T, now it's fine, and that is in reference to what type of tool we're using of course, and then change this to view mode normal. And I see a little, little error down here, that's just because this is supposed to be remove all object, sorry about that. Okay, back into on create. Gonna do the same thing for both the undo and the redo buttons. So I just change this from eraser to undo. Change this to undo. This is undo button. Change this to undo and redo button because that's gonna handle both of those. Of course, it doesn't exist yet. And then of course, we're going to also check to make sure that it's gonna be possible for us to undo. And to do that, we're just gonna go set enabled and S Pen page doc dot and call is undoable, which we have from before. And we might as well just come in here, do the same thing for the redo button, because this is gonna be the listener for both of them. So just change this to redo, change this to redo, change this to redo, redo. That's perfectly fine, da 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 da, everything else looks fine. Okay, so that means we gotta create the click listener for both the undo and the redo button. Eh, let's just come down inside of here, let's go after the eraser listener. Eh, let's go after all these, all right. Just throw it in here and it's going to be private final on click listener again undo redo button click listener a little bit long winded but very descriptive on click listener throw the semicolon in tell me what methods i need to implement there we go throw those in there and whenever undo or redo is clicked on we're going to have to check a couple different things first off we're going to have to say is the s pen page doc valid and we do that by checking if it's equal to null and we'll just return out of here if it is. Then we're gonna check, because this is gonna handle both undo and redo, we're gonna check if the undo button was clicked, and then we can just do that by getting the view and checking if it's equal to the undo button. And then if it is, we wanna check if it's possible to undo anything, and we do that by calling the S Pen page doc again and saying, is it undoable? And now that we know that it is undoable, we're gonna check the previous state history for our page. Let's just call that user data. And then we're going to return it by calling the S Pen page doc and calling undo. After we've done that, we just need to update the undo state in the stack because it's going to save all these previous versions in a stack sort of structure. So update, undo, and this is going to be user data. And then we can say else if our redo button was hit or clicked on, and we're going to check it just to make sure that's what we're dealing with. M redo button. Well, we're going to do pretty much the same exact thing, but I'm just going to type it out. If S Pen page doc, check if it is redoable. Then we're gonna check, then we're going to return previous page history, call that user data as well. S Pen page doc and call redo. And I got a little error here, let's just change this to undoable. Well, capital U. There we go, all fixed. Now basically all we have to do is handle whether the image picker button was clicked on. So back up into on create. Just copy these, cause we need both of them. Paste that in there, and this is background image button and that's good this is going to be as well background image button background image button and this is background image button click listener throw the little m on there scroll down inside of this and where do we want to go i'm just going to go right here and we're going to do pretty much the same sort of thing private final on click 
listener, except we're going to be opening up the gallery in this situation. New, on, click, listener, throw in a semicolon, add in implemented methods. There we go. When that guy is clicked on, we're going to close our settings windows for both of the pen and the eraser, which we created this just a couple seconds ago. And then we are going to open up our picture gallery. And I'm going to use an outside method for this, input image, which I'm going to create here in a second. And I'm going to pass this guy that we created way up here to say that the reason why we are going to be opening up an intent which is going to open up the picture gallery and then send the location of the image back to this application. Where am I? There I am. Is because of this right here. So it'll be able to pass it back and I'll be able to track exactly what's going on. And that's all I need to do for that. I need to create this guy though. Let's just go down here, paste this in here. Private, it's not gonna return anything. Call our picture gallery. It's going to receive our little request code so that we can track this. I'm going to be creating an intent, so I'm going to throw this inside of a try block, give ourselves a little bit more room, create the intent that's going to display the gallery, and then allow the user to pick a picture, and then return it to our app. So I'm going to call this gallery intent, and it's going to be equal to intent, and the intent action is going to be get content, because that's exactly what I'm doing. Get the location of an image that I'm going to use as a background image. Going to set the data type that's going to be returned, which is going to be an image. Make sure I spell gallery right. Then I'm going to trigger my activity and then return the item selected to a method I'm going to create in a second called on activity result. Do this with start activity for result. And I just pass in the intent and the request code so that I know what exactly is going on. I'm going to test for that inside of on activity result. Then basically the only thing that can go wrong here is basically the gallery isn't found. So I'm going to catch activity not found exception E and we can do a little message here. This is going to be M context for me. That's what I call it. And I'm going to say cannot find gallery. And then we have to put in a duration for this. So we'll just say exactly what we always do. Toast length short. And then of course to show the toast we have to come in here and go show. And there it is. And we can do E print stack trace. If we want to try to catch that error and figure out what it is. Okay, so after this is triggered, what are we going to have to do? Well, we're going to have to have on activity result in here to catch the result of the data. So this is going to be protected because we're going to want these methods in the same activity to have access. And it's going to get request code sent to it, just like you just saw. And we're going to have result code. That's this guy up here, see? And then the intent data. I could have had that automatically generated, but I didn't, so that's okay. Super on activity result and then we're just going to pass in the result code again and then we're just going to pass in our request code again our result code and data and then we need to check to make sure everything went all right whenever the intent was called and the result code is going to tell me that by checking if result code was okay and then check if the image was actually available for us to use or you know they didn't give us one or whatever and if they didn't give us one let's just print out a toast and cannot find image and then we can just throw return in after that get out of here and then we want to check that the intent was actually meant to return an image and we're going to do that with getting that request code and then comparing it to this gigantic thing up here this guy right here request code select background image da 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 da, da. paste it in there and if we got it we want to say and get our path to our image call data get data and we're going to create a cursor which is going to allow us to read the image data and we're going to need a content resolver to be returned and it's going to be used to access the data in this case the image and we can get that by calling git content resolver and then finally query ri parse image file u ri to string pass in null null and null we don't need to worry about that and then we can just call the cursor move to next which is going to move through all our results get our image path by calling cursor get string cursor dot get column index and then media store is going to have an index of all the different files that are in storage media store media columns dot data and then all we need to do now is set the background for our document and page dot set background image pass the image path and then update the surface view and this is image page not image path there we go and that is basically everything I just need to come up into on create and finish this off by checking to make sure the S Pen is used by default and we're just gonna go select button and set my 
pen button as the default active button whenever this starts up. And then we're gonna check if the S Pen is enabled or not by checking if it's false. And if it is, we're gonna set the tool type to be used to by calling the surface view and saying use the finger as the option because the S Pen is not available. Pass in to set tool type action, S Pen surface. View stores the option to use the stroke, so we're going to reference that so that it knows. Oh, and this is giving me an error because it wants an extra null inside of here. Got that fixed. That's down at the very, very end inside of on activity result right there. And then the only thing left to do is basically to shut down everything whenever the application is destroyed by calling mpen setting view is not equal to null. Paste it in there and close it. And then we're going to do the same thing for the eraser if. Eraser setting view is not equal to null. Well, we want to close it also. And if the surface view, S Pen surface view is not equal to null, well, we're going to close that as well. And then we're going to set it to null. Do the same thing for note doc. With note doc, we're going to do a try catch. And if we got this far and we're destroying the application anyway, it really doesn't matter. E print stack trace. Catch that later before we release it. And then make sure that this is the S Pen note doc and this is the S Pen note doc. And there we go. Wow, that was a lot of information. So covered a ton of different things in regards to S Pen. Of course, all the code is available in the description for this video, and it's extremely heavily commented. Please leave any questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.